there's an idea behind certain things where if you do something, it's assumed you get a reward. You know, saying that working hard makes you successful isn't always true though. There are some people that work hard and are successful, but the vast majority aren't. Just like there are people doing the exact same routine as professional bodybuilders, but they don't look like professional bodybuilders. You go into the gym every day, you know, have this idea that by doing what that bodybuilder is doing, you will eventually look like him. Doing the same exercises, same amount of sets, maybe even the same weight. You're making progress every week, but you don't even look good enough for the beach, let alone a bodybuilding show. So we have to ask ourselves, what is the bodybuilder doing differently? Just like what is the successful person doing differently? Point A to point B lifting is the act of completing an exercise movement. On the bench press, moving that barbell from your chest to lock out. For bicep curls, bringing that dumbbell from your waist to your shoulder. Just because you moved that weight from one point to another doesn't mean you're doing it effectively. Although in many cases, it does work to some extent. This is called passively moving the weight. Properly contracting and flexing the muscle would be actively moving the weight. So, du -du 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 -du. passive, nice and slow and controlled is active. The biggest issue here might simply be ego lifting. Are point A to point B lifting and ego lifting the same thing? No, but usually ego lifters are point A to point B lifters, whereas some of the latter simply don't know how to work out. It's difficult to humble yourself and put the correct weight on the bar when everyone else at the gym is trying to pump up big numbers. Keep in mind, going against this point A to point B lifting applies mostly to bodybuilding, as this is actually how many professional athletes train, especially strongmen, power lifters, Olympic weightlifters. They achieve their goals by moving a certain weight with a specific form from one point to another. And of course, that activates your muscles, but it also activates your tendons, accessory muscles, other things more than bodybuilding. And the focus of bodybuilding is muscle size, so we don't want that. Just because your form is correct, just because the exercise looks good, and you're increasing the weight every week, does not mean that it's working optimally. Yes, it's probably working, but the other elements to address are weight, repetition tempo, concentric and eccentric contraction, rest time, and exercise choice. Are you using too much weight? I have several videos addressing this, one being, can you build muscle with light weight? Another's titled, light weights require mind-muscle connection. And the third is, muscle size and relevant strength, where you can develop an understanding of why you don't want to lift heavy weights necessarily. Are you using more weight than necessary to stimulate the specific muscle you're targeting? Repetition tempo, how fast are you moving the weight? Are you using momentum? The slower you go, generally speaking, the more you will stimulate your muscle. And slowing down the repetition tempo is the first step for most people, also focusing on that negative. In order to achieve the optimal mind-muscle connection, momentum isn't necessarily a bad thing and can be beneficial to some exercises, but understand the applications. Arguably the most important, what is your concentric and eccentric contraction? How well are you flexing and stretching each muscle during the exercise? If you're doing this properly, the other aspects usually fall in line without having to think about it. You know, you'll be doing the correct amount of weight, you'll have the correct repetition tempo, you'll be resting the right amount of time just by getting the flex and the stretch correct. How long are you resting between sets? Are you stretching your body so much with your too heavy weight that you need to rest two, three, five minutes between sets? Fix your form correct your repetition tempo, make sure you're really stimulating the muscle, and reduce your rest time as much as possible by using a moderate to light weight. Exercise choice. Is the exercise you're performing even conducive to properly stimulating that muscle? Sometimes it's just not a good exercise for bodybuilding, like a power clean. Other times you aren't feeling the exercise that day. You know, one week the pec deck will really hammer your chest, and the next week it might be overworking your front delts. And the goal here always ties back to what bodybuilding simply is. Taking the targeted muscle to failure. Ego lifting, point A to point B lifting, is just something that 
falls in line with conventional wisdom. It's something a lot of people end up doing just because they want to put up those big numbers. Uh, so again, by all means, that works for certain sports, strongman powerlifting, but if you wanna be a bodybuilder, you're not gonna be doing point A to point B lifting. Uh, well, you can, but you're not gonna be a good bodybuilder. So thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please drop a like on the video, leave me a comment down below, and above all guys, please share the video. If you'd like to support me further, you can check out some of the links in the description, as well as reach out to me via frank follow.com for one-on-one -on -one diet and fitness consultations. Thanks again for joining me, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow's video.